guys, what's up? My name is Kars. Welcome to Face Your Shitty Movement. This is our Halloween edition, the fourth episode. No one gives a shit. Okay, so today we're talking about something that's terrifying. If you're a sumo deadlifter, you may have experienced it. If you're a woman sumo deadlifter, you've absolutely experienced it. And that is a bro telling you that sumo is cheating. <laughs> the horror. You don't really need to tell them anything besides shut the fuck up. I like to keep it succinct like that. However, it's also good to understand why that is such a ridiculous thing to suggest or say other than the obvious. You know, it's kind of like when parents say that people who don't have children are selfish and it's a very humble brag thing, right? Like the implication is that because they have children, they are selfless, right? But instead of saying, I'm selfless and amazing, fuck all you peons, which I would have a lot more respect for, honestly. Um, it's, it's selfish to not have children. The same thing goes with the crybabies in powerlifting. If you are participating in a sport, competing in a sport, and there is a lift that you could perform so much better on and you're not doing it out of some sense of righteousness, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. What? That's absurd. So the people usually making this claim that it's cheating have never actually really gone the distance with sumo. Otherwise they would uh, have felt they would have their aha moment where they realize just how much more technical sumo is. And at the end of the day, yes, some people gravitate more towards one or the other. And there are lots of different things that will determine why that is in this particular individual's body. It's all over the fucking board and it's you know if they're if you're looking at it from the same logic as these jackasses trying to you know humble brag that people who are strong in sumo aren't actually strong and that they're you know on some moral high ground because they won't lift sumo even though you can in competition and it's a completely valid lift god it pisses me off pissed off fear it's the same thing right I guess it depends on if you're fight or flight. I am fight. Someone popped out from behind a curtain to scare me and I punched him in the fucking face. It was an ex. Wish I had that on film or something. Memories. So the logic, let's call it, is that because sumo is a shorter range of motion, it is therefore less work and easier. What a way to say, I have never actually lifted any significant amount of weight. Because that's not, you can look at everything through a nice physics textbook and say A plus B equals C, but when you're actually in it, there are so many factors that will determine which movement is better for you. Yes, you could say that someone with a short torso and longer arms, but that doesn't mean that they don't have other issues that are affecting their deadlift. And with conventional, my own uh, difficulty with it was um, how hard it is for me to lift my upper back while being down in that position. Guess what? When I was forced to do conventional all the fucking time, I got really good at conventional and my sumo got even better. Because it's fundamentally, it's a hip dominant movement. There are so many reasons why this is so dumb. Optimally, yes, we want to minimize the joint angle and limiting the range of motion can help do this. A bigger joint angle means a bigger range of motion and more work overall. Remember that powerlifting is, yes, about leverages in that textbook kind of way, but it's also about the individual's strength and technique. While sumo does decrease the range of motion, you're still starting from the floor. <laughs> That's the hard part, getting down there. And if you don't have 
the hip anatomy to be able to get down there well, sumo is not going to work well for you. Um, and that doesn't necessarily just mean someone who's really tight, but often it's people who have hypermobility or too big of a range of motion. I'm one of those people. However, I learned to work with it, yada, yada, yada. So you have to remember that muscles work on a spring tension, right? I talked about this in the Fix Your Shitty Movement with Philippe, a boy. Oh my God, I actually have, it's broken, but that's actually gonna illustrate my point even more. So this was, <laughs> this little knife thing was also on a spring tension. Oh fuck, I fucked it up even. But the spring is broken. So before it had a nice like spring to it. I load the spring. This would make a lot more sense if it was still functioning. Um, work with me here. This is, uh, this is actually real. I was about to take part of ballpoint pen or something. So before, right, I loaded it and it would pop right back out. Probably so kids didn't like stab each other in the eye or something. Eh. Um, I don't know why that's okay. It seems like an appropriate time for that, but I don't think it was. Okay, so I actually don't know what the fuck is going on back there, but if the spring gets too compressed, right, like if someone pushes down on it really hard, then it loses its spring-like quality, right? Um, you have to manage the way that you load it, the tension, and the release, right? You can think of it, a bow and arrow, a fucking slingshot, rubber band, whatever the fuck. It's all the same. It's that elastic, right? The other way that you can fuck this up is by overstretching it, right? So like pulling it out and um, think of like a, a like a stretched out slinky or something, right? It also cannot perform its spring-like qualities, and that's really the best example or the best way to explain hypermobility. I have hypermobility, um, and I particularly have quite a bit in my right hip, which has always caused me problems. And what I hurt sumo deadlifting because I stanky legged when I was doing a light weight. That's usually how it happens. I'm not, I gotta focus here. Initially, yes, sumo was like a no brainer for me because it's pretty easy for me to get down into that. I fell backwards, I'd be bad way to go. However, if I go too wide, if I go beyond the point where I'm strong, mobile and take it too far where I'm hypermobile, then I'm just kind of like hanging out in my ligaments. I've surpassed the uh, spring-like quality of whatever muscle I'm trying to use, right? Lo and behold, my hip was unstable when it rolled, stanky like that, and um, yeah, the rest is history. My point is, it's never as simple as range of motion easier. Another really great example, my deficit deadlift is really strong. I would actually venture to guess that it's probably right around where my max is. I don't actually know that. I'm not gonna fucking test my deficit deadlift. Um, the way that I unlocked the conventional deadlift was by doing it at a deficit. That should make it harder, right? Because you're increasing the range of motion. God, I did those like conventional deficits, like a three inch deficit, when you're already like struggling to reach the bar. Yeah, yeah, I got much better at it. Why? Isn't that increasing the workload? Yes, unless you have really strong legs and really strong posterior chain, which is really what is emphasized more in the conventional deadlift. So in other words, when I used to do rack pulls or block pulls, those are supramaximal lifts, meaning that because you reduce the range of motion, that you should technically be able to do much more weight than you would deadlifting from the floor. That being said, um, rack pulls in particular are kind of a controversial lift because a lot of people wind up fucking up their backs with it. Why? they take their legs out of the equation. I have really strong legs, and if you load my spring tension in my legs, right, and my, this bad boy, look at the knife pointing right at it, get that, right there. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's get back on track. So for me, trying to pick something up from here to here really limits my strengths. With block pulls, last time I did them, it wasn't pretty. 
peed my pants and did like 265 and hurt my QL. Like, what the fuck? Um, and it's because I can't use my legs, right? I actually just have unlocked block holes and rack holes, and it's a really big deal for me because I have definitely tried in the past and I just couldn't do it. Another really good example is actually in the bench press. There's actually a lot of bitching I wanna do with bench press in this, but I'm gonna try to slow my roll here a little bit. So a spoto press and bench press is one where the weight comes to like an inch or two off the chest, not all the way down to the chest. Um, when I was plateaued with my bench for like two years, um, I tried everything and Spoto press, when it was recommended to me, was really easy for me, actually. Um, I could rep 135, my white whale, with a Spoto press before I could ever do a single full rep, no pause or pause, with 135. Why is that? I lose tension at the bottom. And so that's why if I can get that thing to like clear this, like right where this photo press is, I'm fine, I'm good to go. It's, I, whatever the fuck happens there, I lose tension and it's done. For a lot of people, photo press is very difficult for them because it limits that spring tension right off the chest. You've, you've probably seen some people like dig the bar in and let it kind of like bounce out too, right? Like that. Uh, right, that power, that explosiveness that you do need off the chest. Um, bench is coming up in December. You know, it's my most challenging lift, but as such, I understand it so well, and I fucking love it. So I have a lot of fucking rants to go on with that. We digress yet again. Another really important thing to remember with powerlifting is that yes, tension is. A, probably the most important part, so the power lifting can be a little bit of a misnomer for what we're actually doing, but there is some explosiveness, right? Like explosiveness is what totally changed my bench, for example. Everyone was telling me to do a bunch of fucking pauses, and I was like crapping out at the bottom because I didn't have any explosiveness off of my chest. As soon as I fixed that, boom, boom. I said I was gonna stop talking about bench, but it's so good. Back to conventional and sumo. Yes, it, we do want uh, to minimize the joint angle and with it the range of motion. Um, but if you look at the low bar squat, which is a hinge, right? It's a hip dominant squat. You can see how they really argue themselves into a corner here. Conventional deadlift, if you're stronger in your posterior chain than you are in your legs, then conventional will probably work a lot better for you. It's worth noting that um, women generally tend to be stronger in their legs than their upper body and therefore tend to gravitate towards sumo. Also, being generally smaller in size is or can be advantageous for sumo. So, I mean, the main thing that we're looking at here is bros being bros and uh, just shitting all over women trying to be strong and being better than them. I mean, tail is old as time, right? It's the same with the bench arch. Back on track. So sumo, right? Your hips aren't as far back as they are with like the conventional deadlift, right? But there's a lot more emphasis on quad especially. You also have to think of it like this. Which musculature do you want doing most of the work? Deadlift, the joint we're looking at is the hips. Your hips and your posterior chain are a lot fucking stronger than your quads. You look at a low bar squat. Without question, we want to put the workload in your hips because they can withstand a lot more weight and produce a lot more power than your quads can. So when I'm explaining to someone why low bar squat is so much more advantageous, we want the bar to stay in the same place, right? Just move up and down. We don't want any forward or back motion. Where the bar is located on your body forces you to be in a hinge. You have to sit way back in your hips, right? Versus, right, to keep that bar there. Versus a high bar squat, you're really not loading your, your glutes at all, right? Like it's very quad dominant. So the main difference between the squat and the deadlift is that with the deadlift, 
the joint in question is the hips. In the squat, it's the hips and the knees. The low bar squat allows you to access the part of your body that is way stronger and that is uh, capable of moving a lot more weight effectively. Kind of like the conventional deadlift. If you look at a, a low bar squat, depending on the person's physiology, but especially someone with like a long femur and the way that their torso is like way forward in their low bar squat, it looks a lot like a conventional deadlift. Obviously the joint angle in the hips is uh, increased, but that's the benefit of conventional. You're using, you're accessing, if you can do conventional well, you're accessing a much more powerful, potentially, area of your body, joint of your body, system on your body than these guys. Um, you know, I understand the bros who have this problem probably don't have very good quads, but you know, there's a solution for that. Try sumo deadlift. Ha ha! In your face! But they can't because they fucking suck at it. Which brings me, finally, to my, well, I'm not gonna say conclusion because it never really. So they have spindly ass legs, right? And not very strong quads. So yeah, sure, great, perfect, good for you. You know, take your quads out of the equation. You might be saying to yourself, sumo does feel a lot easier. Again, not everybody actually feels that way or thinks that. I have to actually force some people to do sumo. Depends on the individual, just like fucking tattoo that on my head. But why does sumo feel so much easier? Because it's basically like a high squat until you are faced with a weight that you have to move intelligently with the leverage, right? And deadlifting is all about leverages. Lifting is all about leverages. But with deadlift, nowhere is it more clear, as I'll show you in just a second. So what happens is basically what happened to me when I started sumo deadlifting. I have no idea where I even picked it up from, who told me to try it, because everything in Russian kettlebell is um, basically a conventional deadlift, every hip hinge. The irony, right, that, that I didn't like conventional deadlift. Anywho, so when people sumo deadlift, they literally are just doing like, let me just fucking costume hold up. They're literally just doing like a sumo squat, right? You can even see their hips are really low, right? Just like straight up and down. So I already said sumo is more technical, right? And someone who's doing that with a light weight would be like, this is simple, right? You just move up and down. Um, you can't get away with that nearly as long with uh, the conventional deadlift without fucking yourself up. Uh, with sumo, because of the stance and it, the way that it is so similar to a squat, you can get pretty far if you have a decent squat. It's like above parallel squat, so it's like, yeah. It's fairly obvious why someone would find that to be easier. The thing is, sumo is about patience and pressure. You have to be really patient with sumo. And again, if you're strong, you can get pretty fucking far before you realize just how much different it is from conventional in that way. So when I say it's about pressure, right? You're really trying to wedge yourself against the bar as much as possible and push down into your feet to create that tension that allows it to come up off the ground. Now there are several different ways that I teach sumo depending on the individual and I'm not going to turn this into a sumo tutorial but when you apply the same like sumo squat kind of thing um, all the way until you get to a weight where you can't do that anymore that's usually when it starts to get in people's backs because what will happen is their hips will shoot up and then they'll finish like this. The dreaded stripper deadlift. I was a bit of a pro for a while there. Um, and that's also what led to my adductor injury. Thank God. Um, my body was like, bitch, stop it, bitch, stop it, bitch, stop it. And I wasn't listening. 
and it stopped me and it could have been a lot worse. And I learned a lot from that injury. It's the only way to think about injuries is just like the gift of injury. As Stu McGill said, I like to give credit because it's a pretty fucking cool thing to say and I did not make that up. Um, titties. So with sumo, um, the way I set up and the way I teach it to be set up is to have people's shins right up on the bar, right? So there's not that ramp or whatever. And some people teach to come straight down for the bar. Um, and again, it's really easy to get into. Oh my God, that's how the spring broke. Um, it's really easy. It's really easy to get into squat territory like this. Um, but if you, again, watch someone who actually sets up that way and how they execute their monster deadlifts, if they set up coming straight down like that, you can see just how much is happening before that bar actually leaves the ground. The explosiveness for sumo generally happens like at the knee. So once you can get it to clear the ground, right, then you powerful lockout. Um, it's wise to not blow your load too soon with conventional too, where people usually fail with conventional is at lockout. With sumo, it's at the floor, which is another reason why Bro, it's not cheating because the hardest part is the floor for us. The part that is arguably easier for conventional. Both deadlifts require explosiveness, but it depends on timing. Timing is everything. And this is actually why I like conventional so much because it's much simpler. And that doesn't mean easier because obviously it took me a while to fucking figure it out, but. I find it to be just a lot more aggressive um, and very grip and rip. Sumo, not so much. In the past, successfully, I have gripped and ripped with sumo, but I'm, I really wanna hit 405, and I have learned that I need to backtrack way back and slow my goddamn roll. So pauses and all that shit is, well, nothing will fix your sumo better than pauses if it's a suitable weight can't say that enough. But with conventional, at least the way I do it and teach it, you have the bar away from you, right? You have it like over the midfoot and you start, I start sumo this way as well, with as deep of a hip hinge as possible, right? I'm in a good morning right now because <laughs> I can produce more power the more I load this muscle group. So, like a broad jump, right? If I said I would give you a million dollars if you jumped from here to the back of the room, how would you prepare your body to do that to the best of your ability? Would you just kind of go like, I gotta save like my energy because smaller range of motion, all this shit? No, you gotta load the springs, right? So, kettlebell swing is another great example. I'm gonna try really hard not to go too deep into that, but. So you have, I call it like a runway basically with conventional. So here on your mark, get set, go. Ooh, it's weird with these glove thingies. So, right, it's kind of like a ramp, so to speak. At least that's how I think about it. Like when, it, when I'm ready to go, right, it's like that leverage happens right away. Um, and with sumo, it's different. It's really hard to understand sumo unless you see someone lift a, an incredible amount of weight. I was at a meet where um, a young woman is like 115 pounds, but lanky. You know, you'd look at her and think, probably not a great deadlifter. Uh, well, she was going for three times body weight. And it was one of those moments where you could hear a fucking pin drop in the room as we we're like <gasps> watching this chick get ready for her sumo. And let me tell you, you might think that, well, there's an advantage with range of motion and stuff. A woman that size, a person that size, but especially a woman that size, that her hands are so much smaller. There's a lot of disadvantages too, you idiot. You're doing a sport. Of course you want to play up whatever is advantageous to you and your physiology so that you can win. Like that's why there's not like a height limit in NBA. You're too tall, you're gonna make the little guys feel bad. No, it's fucking sport, right? Like what a bunch of crybabies. Okay, reel it back in. Um, 
one thing that just stayed with me about this experience of watching her lift that weight was how long she took to set up. And, you know, it sounds like obvious, but when you're out there, you have a minute, you feel rushed, right? Like you get, ah, right? You just kind of like, it takes time to learn how to shut it all out, stay calm and stay focused. And when you watch her do that lift and the amount of time that it took her, not just to set up, but to get that thing moving and how slow it went, that's what made it really, that's, it was so clear how that was different from conventional. Um, again, it's a technical lift, so you really don't see it done very well unless someone is using a weight that fucking matters, right? 335 or whatever the fuck it was, um, you know, there's, there's always like bros like, oh, I can do that in my fucking sleep. It's her body, right? Like she's not, it's so, it's so embarrassing the way that they just like want to cut down girls trying to be strong. And that's like, that's exactly what it is. And it's so embarrassing. Like, what are we on the playground, you guys? Like how threatened, how like flimsy is your sense of masculinity if they're, you're like, girls can't even, anyway. I, I, this is why it's taken so long to do this because I've gone on some really epic rants. I promise, and I did promise, I'm not gonna go too far into kettlebells either, but there are two accessory exercises with kettlebells um, that I think illustrate the principles behind both sumo and conventional very well. So I'm gonna show these to you and then maybe shut the fuck up, no promises. Rear loaded deadlift clean, whatever the fuck you do, right? It's making you be in a deeper hip hinge, i.e. increasing the range of motion. However, for a lot of people whom I recommend this exercise to or utilize it to illustrate deadlift type shit to, it's way easier for them to do this one than it is to do, especially like a dead clean uh, between your feet, right? Dead clean being a no swing involved. I'll show you that in a second. But the rear loaded deadlift, um, I wanna maximize the probability of me not blowing out the ass of this costume, so I just like, I'm not gonna go too heavy. Um, I mean, it's 88 pounds, so it's not light by any means, but I have to get way back here, <laughs> and it's gotta come through the legs, and I just, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's up to the, up to the challenge. Okay, so, the, the bell is behind my heels, right? And I'm forward of it. So I have to get way far down, right? To grab the handle, right? Kind of like how I was saying with the, um, how I set up like in kind of a good morning, right? Um, so for people who squat too much, right? Um, and always go this way, they have to learn to bring their weight back into their heels, which is huge. Um, so if you're using a light enough weight, to do this exercise, um, you can squat it, right? You can just come up and down with it, right? Um, especially if you are a strong squatter. Again, this is why it's important to use a suitable weight. Heavy weight is not always like dangerous. Light weight can often be way more dangerous. Whoa, because you half ass it. Okay, so back to this one. So um, I'm not gonna squat this weight. I'm really not interested in trying to because right now, this is what's loaded, right? I'm still in that good morning position. It would be like trying to pick up the deadlift with my shoulders, like with the barbell, my shoulders way over the bar, right? So what you have to do is tilt it like so and get it on its knife edge, which is the same thing you have to do with the swings. I'm not gonna go there, but like this, right? And you see how I'm like set up in my heels? It looks like I'm not forward of the belt, but I so am. Here. And you have to get it back behind the heels. If the bell arrives forward of your heels, that means 
that's usually an indication that you're squatting the bar on the descent, um, which can set you up for bullshit reps on subsequent reps. If you do this exercise with a decent amount of weight, you'll feel how much you have to really feel that leverage, right? Um, and it's sumo-like because you have to have your legs wide enough where you can reach between them. It's kind of like a semi-sumo, but same fucking difference, right? Um, still, you're hinging into your hips, but as I, you know, do this, right? Like, that joint angle is not the same as like a conventional, right? You see how like further back my hips are? That's the point. You have to build the pressure here. Another way that you know that you're fucking it up is if you cast the bell out uh, during your deadlift, and that means that you're leading with your chest, right? It has to be this, this movement. And last but not least, one of my favorite accessories to teach the um, hip hinge in its entirety is the two-handed dead clean with the kettlebell. It's explosive. The bell doesn't have to move all over the place. Um, it's light. This is like 45 pounds, um, 20 kilo. But you have to move quickly and explosively enough that you don't have time to think. You know that bell needs to get up here in your face. And also by it doing that, you have to be braced against it because otherwise it's gonna push you off your feet, right? You have to act quickly to do it correctly. And it can be intimidating to people who haven't learned how to be explosive before. Um, but in terms of learning the difference between a hinge and a squat, there's nothing like it. Um, I know I've made some videos about it that you motherfuckers probably haven't watched because it's kettlebells, but watch and learn. The thing that I really want you to notice is the speed of the bell leaving the floor and my setup in comparison to that rear loaded deadlift. So hinge, right? It's not nearly as deep as it was with the barbell because it's right back in here. Um, however, it's still, I still do as deep of a hip hinge as possible. We want the bell to be in line with your shins, just like we would want in a conventional deadlift. And we want your elbows and knees to be in line with one another, okay? So starting with the hips high, grab the handle of the bell, and see how that's that same leverage movement, right? If I go from here, I'll use my back, right? And also you can see my elbows are now forward of my knees, so I'm not in the right position. So if I drop my butt a little bit, right? The explosiveness is right out the gates, right? Like you still, of course, wanna be, position yourself correctly, but when it's time to start the movement, it's time to start the movement and it's a go. If you apply that same kind of hastiness to sumo, you'll crap out really early or you lose your back, right? Just like I was saying with a rear loaded one, how you let the bell kind of swing forward uh, and that's your back, it's being too hasty off the ground. Hopefully I've enlightened you a little bit. Um, regardless, anyone who says something like, like I used to say that about conventional when I didn't like it, sumo's the only deadlift, sumo's better. How convenient. <laughs> and what does that mean? So, of course, only my records count, my lifts count, all this stuff, anyone who does this bullshit. I mean, I didn't really lean into it like it's cheating or something, but I was like, you're insane if you do conventional over sumo. Now it's completely person by person basis. Um, it's all over the board. And I really want my clients to be versatile, but if we're going for competition, we're gonna use the lift they're most comfortable with. And sometimes that changes. Sometimes, in fact, recently, someone who's competed multiple times in sumo, um, something about the way she had changed the way she moves, was it, it, I was like, I really think you should switch to conventional. And she's one of my OGs. She's like, what? <laughs> and wouldn't you know it? She's like, I don't like it. It works for her. And you have to be open to the possibility that that's gonna change because your body changes, your skill level changes. You just, you, 
you learn shit, ideally. And if you don't, you're probably the motherfucker we're all afraid of getting into a conversation with. I'm not really afraid of it, I'll just tell you to fuck off. My name's Cars. Happy Halloween.